Hi, I'm Peter Gowiski from Mayo Clinic, Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of Vascular Surgery. As we go to the press today on February 28, 2021, over 28 million people have tested positive to the COVID virus in the United States and over 512,000 died. The COVID-19 collection of the JVS journals continues to grow and it includes now more than 120 publications on COVID-19 and vascular disease. I am pleased to introduce to you the 2021 May issue of the Journal of Vascular Surgery and highlight four excellent papers which are freely available for the next two months. The editor's choice article for this issue is Validation of the Global Limb Anatomical Staging System in First Time Lower Extremity Revascularization by uh, Dr. Liang and colleagues from Boston, Massachusetts. This is a retrospective review of 1,060 patients who had undergone 1,180 first-time open and endovascular revascularizations for chronic limb-threatening ischemia. Using the angiographic images, the limbs were classified using the glass grading published in the Global Vascular Guidelines. The grades from 0 to 4 are based on the length of the disease, the presence, length, and location of chronic total occlusion, and the extent of the popliteal artery involvement in patients with femoropopliteal disease. It is based on the length and location of the stenosis and uh, the chronic total occlusion in patients with infra popliteal disease. The main finding in this paper is that a higher glass stage was associated with greater rates of reintervention and restenosis. And the take home message is that glass can be used to predict reintervention and restenosis after first time lower extremity revascularization. Our CME article this month is titled Comparison of Open and Closed Cell Stent Design Outcomes After Carotid Artery Stenting in the Vascular Quality Initiative. It was written by Dr. Fatih and colleagues from Baltimore, Maryland and La Jolla, California. In this VQI study, carotid stenting with a distal protection device was performed using closed cell stents in 1,384 and open cell stents in 1,287 patients. There was no significant difference between the two groups in in-hospital mortality, in stroke, and in stroke or death. Patients who received closed cell stents, however, had increased odds of in-hospital and one-year stroke and death rates when stenting was used for lesions located in the carotid bifurcation and not just in the internal carotid artery. This might be related to the relatively lower conformability of closed cell stents in a tortuous bifurcation anatomy. The next article is a multi-center study. It was written by Dr. Jonathan Bath and colleagues, and it is entitled Endovascular Interventions for Claudications Do Not Meet Minimum Standards for the Society for Vascular Surgery Efficacy Guidelines. This VQI study investigated outcomes of endovascular treatment for intermittent claudication in 16,152 patients and compared them to standards established in the SVS guidelines. The main finding of this study was that only 32% of the patients were free of recurrent claudication at two years. 
Recurrence was more likely with treatment of more than two arteries or in those who had atherectomy. The use of antiplatelet medications and statins and endovascular treatment using stents, however, were associated with a decreased odds of recurrent symptoms. The take-home message is that patients with claudication should receive aggressive risk factor modification before invasive treatment because symptom recurrence is high and it is associated with poor pre-procedure medical optimization. The final article by Eilenberg and co-authors from Hamburg, Germany and Rochester, Minnesota is entitled Comparison of Transfemoral versus Upper Extremity Access to Antegrade Branches in Branched Endovascular Aortic Repair, BVAR. The study compared outcomes in 60 patients with transfemoral access versus 92 patients with upper extremity access used for branched endovascular aortic repair. Transfemoral access coupled with the preloaded wire technique was associated with lower rate of complications and a higher rate of technical success. Radiation dose was less, operating time was shorter and there was a lower rate of stroke, transient ischemic attacks or spinal cord complication than in patients with upper extremity excess. These were just four excellent papers we published in the May issue of the JVS that by the way also include the SCVS presidential address of Dr. Gibb Church, Grit Matters in Vascular Surgery, and a short but key articles you don't want to miss, written by Drs. Rokosz, Starnes, and Elliot Chaikov on implementation of the SVS Abdominal Aortic Aneurysm Guidelines. Please read our journals, follow us on social media, and remember in this time of pandemic, the number of cases diminish, but it's still essential to protect your patients, yourself, your family, and friends from the COVID-19 virus. Thank you for watching, and see you next time for highlights of the June issue of the Journal of Vascular Surgery.